back in my normal spot here. So let's go ahead and jump into this B6.1 and see all the things that went into it. Now, full disclosure, this setup is directly copied off of Ray Monday's outdoor setup. At the time of this video, I think it's his most recent one and I really like it. I've already had the opportunity to run it at an outdoor clay track recently, and I'm really looking forward to running it again at my next big race. Now, it should be noted that this particular setup is specifically for an outdoor dirt track where the conditions are very loose. What we're doing with this setup is kind of two primary things. We're taking a lot of weight in the vehicle and we're adding some and we're pushing it further back. What this is doing is it's putting more weight bias towards the rear tires so that it generates a little bit more grip and stability. And then we're also softening up the suspension package quite a bit. So let's go ahead and jump into it and see what I'm talking about. So the first and most obvious thing about this setup is that it's got this big black cover over the gears. This is because we're running a stand-up transmission configuration opposed to the lay down or lay back. What this does is it stands up the idler gear, it moves it literally up so that then it can move the motor further back, thus achieving that weight bias I was just talking about. Now you do need a few parts to do this if you're looking to try it yourself. It's not just a matter of adjusting a few screws, you do have to change out quite a few parts if you want to try this yourself. I went ahead and linked all the parts that you would need for a stand-up configuration if you wanna try it and you find yourself at a good old-fashioned outdoor dirt track. So then the next thing that I would like to note is the rear shock tower. This is actually the option tower the tall tower that would be used to accommodate the tall shock bodies that are also in this setup. The theory behind running a taller shock body is going to be it has a little bit more fluid in there, so it's going to be a little bit more consistent over a series of lots and lots and lots of bumps. And then my personal opinion is that it technically is more material, more fluid, so it does add just a little bit more weight to the rear of the car. I'll get to the shock setups themselves in just a minute. I want to go through the front shock tower first and a couple other things before we jump into that side of the setup. So tall tower in the rear. Up front, we have the flat tower option. Now, I have been running the gullwing configuration in this car for a very long time, and I don't ever really run the flat tower option. Why? The flat arms and flat tower combo tends to be a little bit more responsive. So on a track where it's incredibly high bite or an astro track or a carpet track, you really don't need that much extra steering. The going configuration does a really good job at keeping the initial turn in a little bit more mellow while getting a little bit more aggressive as it progresses on the stroke. Now, the name of the game, the overall idea of this setup with the extra weight, moving it around and softening everything up is getting the car into the track. It may be a phrase that you've heard before. Basically what it means is you literally feel like the car is more in the track. You're getting a little bit more grip out of it. It doesn't feel like it's floating around or it's just not compressing the suspension correctly. So what we're doing is we're trying to get the car into the loose dirt surface to generate more grip. So like I said, we move the motor further back with the stand-up transmission. We are running the tall tower and the tall shock bodies, getting a little bit more weight and a little bit more consistency out of the rear suspension. We're also running the brass C-block. Just another way to get that weight towards the rear of the car, generate that grip. And then with this stand-up transmission, we can also see that the battery is moved backwards as well. So again, weight bias shifting towards the rear of the car. It's about as close as you can get to the rear motor buggy without it being completely in the rear, I guess. Now you may have noticed I do have the soft arms in the rear and I have the hard flat arms up front. My theory is 
the soft arms in the rear will generate a little bit more flex, so it could potentially create a little bit more grip. And then the hard arms up front will kind of force the arms to do exactly what they're supposed to do is keep the tires in a fairly controlled position and force most of the movement to go through the shock body possibly generate a little bit of push if needed but it's just going to create a little bit more precise accurate movement of the front end as far as additional weights go we do have the carbon plate underneath the steering servo and we do have the carbon plate underneath the electronics the only weights i have underneath the battery are going to be these little nine gram weights that go directly into the little channels underneath the battery pack if you look at ray monday's setup you're going to see that he runs a lot more weight underneath the battery now he's running a modified vehicle. This is going to be run in the 17.5 class. So my car is going to be significantly slower. So I noticed that sometimes the stock buggies in the outdoor Lomi stuff, they don't have enough power to kind of clear jumps or just perform as well as needed. So adding that much weight to the vehicle is just gonna to be too much in my opinion. I won't have enough horsepower to get the car to react the way that I want it to. So we're cutting back on the weight adding just underneath the battery pack there, just because I'm running in the 17.5 class. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at what's inside my shocks. Now this is where it gets interesting in my opinion, the whole getting into the track. What we're doing, starting with what's inside the shocks, we're running the two hole one by sevens in the rear. So they're a little bigger than the 1.6s. And then up front, we're running the three by 1.4s. So a little bit more flow going through the piston. Again, just trying to get that load in the front of the car when we're off power or under braking so that it kind of gets that transition a little bit quicker, getting the car into the track. Now, as far as springs go, I am sticking with the green spring in the rear. And then I went ahead and softened up quite a bit on the front with the green front spring. Again, I ran this already and I really liked it. The front end was very responsive and this turn in was fairly quick. I didn't have too much pushing going on and it was kind of a good balance between all this extra weight that we added to the rear of the vehicle. We kind of had to soften the front end up significantly with the three hole piston and that softer spring. Get that front end to dive a little bit easier. As far as shock oil goes, we got 27 and a half in the rear and 30 up front. Pretty standard stuff. Uh, one thing worth noting is going to be the hubs are all dropped to their lowest position to generate as much grip as possible out of the front end and the rear end. Pill setup in the C and D block are going to be one up and in and then center in the rear. As far as the components that I'm personally running for all of my electronics and such, I am running starting at the front of the vehicle BK servos this year. It was a switch I made back in January sometime. I'm really happy to be a part of that team. Their products are super awesome. I think they look great. Nice black and silver finish. And I've been very pleased with them so far. I'm running them in all of my vehicles. My good old trusty Hobbywing ESC, the Pro Stock, the 80 amp version. Love this speed controller. I've been running it now for a couple years and I am very, very, very happy with this product. I've been with the Hobbywing team now for close to a year, I think. Battery, good old fashioned Trinity white carbons. Love these things. I still have in my box back there the very first Trinity white carbon that I bought. Been running that thing forever. It hasn't had any significant puffing or anything problematic with it and I still see incredibly low internal resistance for a battery that's two years old. And then I'm super excited that the X Factor from Trinity has finally been approved by Roar. So I went ahead and slapped that in my car. Really looking forward to running that thing as I have not run it yet. So my next race that I'll run will be the first with that one. And then I am running the Futaba receiver that comes with the 7PX. I think it's the R334 something, something, something. It's the antennaless version. 
This one is actually just a little bit smaller than the receiver that came with the 4PX. So I really liked it because it's a pretty tight fit area there. And then of course, last but not least, my white transponder. Obviously the only reason why my vehicle may or may not win. So for tires in the rear, we have the good old fashioned J Concepts double Ds. I believe they're in a green compound. That's the only compound that you can purchase there from the website. And then up front, we have some classic rips. There's those good rib style tires up front. I believe that those are the green compound. Now, as far as other tires that I will have and just kind of be ready to use, depending on what the track does, I have the green compound hybrids that I would use possibly when it's really dusty or if it's really loamy in the morning and it seems like that's the tire of choice. Then on the flip side of that, if the track really grooves up and it has a thick, you know, black groove in it, then I might switch to green compound ellipse in the rears. So it's kind of this like gradation of grip and I just don't know what's going to happen, but I'm prepared for any of those circumstances. And then I also have the green compound dirt webs if I need to go to the ellipse compound tire. If you guys had any more questions about any of the particulars on the setup, I went ahead and linked it down below. It's one of the top links there. So you can go ahead and plug in anything that I may have missed. Thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. You know how all that stuff goes. And I will see you in the next one.